Yes, my sir. name is Francis Dumay. My nickname is Boston. What happened there, I had a, a cousin who was three years older than I am. When I was born, uh, show it to the baby, somebody said there in the crowd. So he, they took the baby, they took me to Sam. And he looked me, looked at me for a while. He said, Boston. So that's where I got my nickname, you know. <laughs> and everybody used to call me Boston. I didn't mind it, you know. I'm used to it anyway, it, you know. Still the family calls me Boston. Not all of them, you know, but some. Um, Francis, how long have you lived in Bonneville? Oh, at least good 40 years, yeah. Because when I worked in the hotel, that's when, that's when I moved to town. Because the wife was no longer with me, and, uh, but I still fed my kids from, from work, you know. So they finally, they got old enough and they just, because they couldn't, put up on any more drinking, I guess, or something like that. Drinking in front of me. Eh? So that's why I did my way of uh, to quit alcohol and stuff like that. But uh, I don't feel bad about it. I'm happy that I did that. Otherwise, that would be a gone a long, long time ago, the way I used to drink. There was no limit. Jim was right when he said he opened a bar and you closed the bar. He was absolutely right. How long were you uh, a trapper? Well, that's quite a while already. Holy smokes. But I forgot exactly the day. I was, I was still working in a hotel. Then I met this fish and wildlife guy he said, Francis, are you still looking for a trap line? I said, yeah. He said, there's one open. They used to be in Solomon Paul, Mursapel, Francis Debo. There was four of them in that trap line next to mine, right, right from my line and that way. Uh, I said, sure, I'll, uh, I'll get it. If if it's, if it's ready, I said, yeah. So I paid for it, but them days was only $10 a trap line. Wow. And uh, he knew how. The white man, we just cannot fool him. You know, he's so smart. What he did, he used to pay for all those trap lines for those Indians, starting from the reserves that way, all the way down to, uh, a lake way over there. There was, and, and my my grand, uh, my father-in-law had this. When he passed away, he took uh, William took over, and he was drinking like crazy. It's not because I done that, you know. I, like I always say, I wanted in a family to stay in a family. I said, give me the first chance if you have it for sale. And I was lucky, all he charged me was a thousand dollars. So I, I paid for it because he was, he was in, the, uh, in a hotel every day till I finished paying more. But I, I didn't feel bad because I wanted to keep it. So that means I got two trap lines two sets of Indians couldn't, he couldn't pay $10, but that's the way the government worked that so that he can get rid, of, get rid of the people. You know, he does everything under this world. You know, in this world, uh, the, the not the creator, but the, you know, the bad people, they had, they had the power. Otherwise, if they didn't have the power, it wouldn't happen what happened to the kids. That's the way I look at it. 
but I don't know where they got their support. And yet today, when I'm thinking about something, it doesn't happen. I just can't do it, doing something else, you know. But uh, the one on that side, very little. That I used to go there and trap at the same time when I was out there. I used to leave the hotel and go check the traps, set the traps or something, you know. I just about killed myself one time. And there was an opening, not maybe just about this size. And it's all ice all the way around. You had to watch where you step, or, you know, you'll slide in. I slide in anyway. Yeah. And what am I going on? No bottom. And I had heavy clothes. Once they soaked, you know, you're heavier. Then I seen a, a little bit of grass in one coming out from the ice. I finally got to that. I grabbed that grass, rest a little bit, and I pulled myself out slowly because I don't want to pull them off. And I made it. It was one of the close calls in my life, yeah, but I managed to get out. See, the wood Lord was helping me, for sure. And that's why I still believe in Christ, for the simple reason, the things that he has done for me in this world. And uh, I, I'm sorry to say I have to believe him. There's still God out there. Like that story I told you, two, two ministers got interviewed. I was sitting and watching the, the news, listening to the news. Two ministers got in, interviewed. This one white guy that started, he said, I believe in God so much. He said, he's the boss of everything. And uh, well, he went a long ways talking. Then uh, this other guy, he said, I don't, I don't feel that way myself. He said, there are so many things in this world, you know that, he told the other guy. He said, so many things happen in this world and it's not doing anything about it. He said, that's why I have a problem with believing that. Whoever heard it, and I bet you, it doesn't matter who, I bet you he started thinking, you know. And uh, it's, you can't satisfy everybody, you know. But we all know that Christ died and he came back alive to his dis dis disciples, you know. And from that's what I used to believe in that, you know, when somebody's reading it. I'm not going to say I did something very wrong. I don't think I did. It's just each individual has his ways of thinking. And that's what happened with me there because it made me think twice before I changed my mind. That that part, we don't take, give ourselves a chance to read that word that the white man used you know, there's there's lots lots of missing in there. It's not telling the whole truth. It shows right now in this world how many kids did we lost. How long have you been a pipe holder? Oh, for many years. When the friendship center when the friendship center started opening up, we had it over here. We used to call this. Next block, George, uh, George Honka used to have furniture. Just across there, there used to be an old house. And we got a phone call one time, to whoever, I forgot who, because uh, uh, he did that time. But he phoned a friendship center that we are going to get some money to use for our meetings and stuff like that, to keep it going. And I was there that, that time. And uh, there was a couple of elders from 
on your leg. Uh, that there was not many people carrying pipes anymore. But that came after. A lot of them came in and... Uh, but some of them are, I think, sometimes the, we've been abusing stuff that we're not supposed to. Because the Indian way of living, and that's the way I, I want to live. Even though I'm a Métis, you know, there is, uh, but uh, because I know Creator done a lot for us in this world, but I don't know how those devils placed themselves on the way down to get rid of that many kids. And them days, a lot of people couldn't afford to support the family because there was nothing. And I asked that one time, I said, what happened at the hungry 30s, I said, what happened there? He said, nothing really, he said, uh, because there was no money to begin with. See? And uh, a lot of, lot of people take their kids there just to have that meal every day. I heard that after here, not too long ago. How many years ago, I don't, I don't know. And, uh, and those two elders, they phoned those two elders to come and do the pipe ceremony. So, they, and I know both, they were brothers. I know both of them. So they came and they had a pipe ceremony and all that. And I was sitting there and uh, after they were done, he said, you're really concerned about the pipe. We can see that. And he said, this, this moment here right now, he said, we want to pass it on to you when we quit here. They didn't stay forever. So that's what I'm doing. I'm passing it on to the Friendship Center, even though sometimes I'm just wasting my time, I think. I don't know but I try and keep whatever they told me. So I've been, I'm the one that's, that started, that uh, those elders started, but I carry on from what they had told me. I don't remember exactly how many years I was there, but I, what I remember, I run away three times altogether because I was so badly abused the last time when I ran away. Then I asked a couple of people from, Ke one from Kihun and one from uh, Cool Lake First Nations. Henry, he was a Dion, but he was uh, supposed to be uh, a different name. But those two there, and I, made a deal with the people that, the runner, runners, you know, that chases the boys when they run away. So he said, don't make a move till we get to the far end where the bus is. Then you guys can do whatever they tell you to do. I know because I know I'm going to get away. That was the third time. So we took off. And this little guy, Francis, Francis Pichy was his name. And Henry Dion, he went by Dion, but he was supposed to be a, a different name from the reserve. So we got over at the junks in the, in the bottom of the junks, El Point Junction. There was that, that, was, that used to be the old road to St. Paul and to the school. <clears throat> so, but we laughed that, that night lots and scared. This, and I, Pistonia, you know why? Had to be him. He said, You guys watch for a straw pile. I said, It'll be nice and warm in there once we crawl under there. 
In no time, there was uh, the guy uh, Henry said, "There's one right here, a brand new one, eh? A straw pile." I said, "Just crawl under." I said, "Don't need a blanket or nothing. You'll be nice and warm." So we all did that. And early, I don't know how early, but it was early in the morning. And all of a sudden, Henry screamed. Holy smokes, just like somebody hit him with a stick or something. A horse stepped on his foot. A, a, a horse, you know, they were eating in the straw pile and he stepped on his foot. He said, I got so scared. He said, I was wondering what the hell was going on. The first thing I remember was the residential school. <laughs> But anyway, we made it through, and from there, when I told them that they are going home, I said, don't tell anybody I'm going south, where my dad used to work for a farmer. Nice people, Ukrainians. So I went over there. And that same year that I was supposed to go back, the residential schools were made for only treaty people, not the Métis. So they put me in there, they accept me there, you know, and uh, and I had a dirty bad luck with, uh, with my lawyer. When, when, I, when he took all the information from the residential school and he gave a piece of paper to Patsy. Patsy took it over there. He said, fill that out. While he's making me sign right here. You know, that means I'm not going to go any further with the, the other, like verbal abuse and stuff, because I had that in there. That's what he did to me, the lawyer. What a crooked son of a gun. Where did you go to school at? At Blue Cross. Do you remember roughly how old you were? What's that? How old you were when you went? I was thinking about maybe, I think, about seven. I was fairly tall already. Maybe, you know, remember uh, Peter Collins from Saddle Lake? There's a few colonies over there. We were playing pool, and I was beating him. And what he did is pushed me right back. I just about fell. So I pushed him back, and he went down on, on the floor. And he screamed. Oh, just like somebody's killing him or something. And that guy looking at me, oh, what has he got in his mind now? I know I'm going to get hit. So he came over. What did you do to Peter? I said, I pushed him back because he pushed me back and I just about fell. That's why I did that. He took my pool cue, turned it around the heavy side. You know, a pool cue is way different over here, you know. And uh, he took that, that pool cue, and put, push, I don't know if he pulled my hair, but he pushed me right down and hit me right across the bum with that. By the love of God, I thought I was dead. Was that the priest? And the worst part was he forced me to get up. I had one hell of a time of getting up from the floor, but he forced me. I finally got up. Today, I never feel anything in, with my back and my, you know, mm -hmm. tailbone or anything. And I, when this came to my mind, while I was over there, I got over there where Dad used to work. They accept me. I work for him. I had three other boys four with me, and we done all the work, you know, and s stuff like that. And one time, he said, does your parents know that uh, 
that you're missing? I don't know. And I told the boys not to tell anybody. He said, we better get a hold of them. That's, that's where he shut the fire off. He told them that I was over there at that farm. They were coming next week. They would have found me anyway. When he talked to me, he said, your dad is coming over here on the next week. Yeah, uh, I never was treated like that in my whole entire life. And I was thinking, if that guy would have crippled me, I'm sure I'd be in that hole because I'd be no good for nothing. But he didn't. Uh, the good Lord didn't help tell him help him, but anyway, he, I made it through. I still thank God for that. That's what I was thinking of. I'd be in a hole if he, I, I was crippled in my back end over here. I said, I'd be no good to nothing because I, I try to work hard, as, uh, hard. I used to even go outside, help the farmer, the one that do, does the farm work. And uh, we came home one night, one o'clock, one o'clock uh, in the morning. When we got into, you must be hungry, he said, yeah, I said, I'm very, I never even had dinner told him that I can talk English already. And uh, we got in, there was only one plate sitting there. He said, what about Francis? He helped me all night. Aren't you going to feed him? No, he said, no, he's going to bed. That's the way they treat me them days. I the, had full rights to run away. That was at the residential school? Yeah, in Blue Quills. Isn't that that was dirty, very very dirty, you know. I think I at least I deserve something to eat after a long day like that. Yeah, it's uh, it it wasn't easy, and most of the boys get a wood licking, but I was hit with a whole queue. He must have wanted to kill me or something. That was the priest. And I was one of the best helps. Sad people from Sad Lake at the same age as me, we done the same thing. And, they, and it was a rich farm, a lot of cattle. We milk, I don't know how many cows, every morning, every evening, clean the barn, you know, all those things that we had to do. But uh, they're all gone now. There's nothing we can do to them because they're all gone. But they didn't have any heart, not a bit. If they had a heart, they wouldn't be doing that. He's a Dion, he went by Dion, eh? And he was adopted, he was supposed to be a John. But anyway, that guy would come upstairs and check his bed. First of all, why is he doing that? You know, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. And uh, if it's wet, he would take him by the head and rub his face there. See, that's that's not human already. No, it's not. It's a double way. I used to feel sorry for the you know that guy. It's, you know, he's washing his face in his own pee. He was sick. There was something wrong with him. He wasn't doing it on purpose. Yeah, that's just about it with the residential school. If somebody ever brags about that place, that, that's a crap. It was no good for nothing. If it was any good, I'd learn something from there. All I learned, I didn't learn that because I used to help dad at seven years old, before I went to the school. Uh, I used to help him, whatever he was doing. And uh, and yet to be treated like that, I, I, I didn't think it was right. That lawyer screwed me up. 
and I couldn't get anybody to appeal it. And, uh, oh, we were treaty at one time, too. You know that? Yeah. We were treaty Indians. Back home in Saskatchewan, he had six boys and a girl by dad's, by dad's side. Well, the girl married uh, a Chinese guy. We have a bunch of uh, cousins, you name it, uh, in Edmonton. How did you leave, lose your treaty rights? What happened there is, uh, I was talking about my family, my dad side. There was five boys and a girl. There were six boys and a girl. So when they approached, my grandfather, his great-grandfather came from France, eh? I have all that information at home. And uh, Linda also has it. He's the one that got it for me. Uh, because I couldn't get my card for uh, at least a couple, couple of years, and they know me all my life. You know that, that's a funny law. But, uh, so, my co said, what about my kids? He said, and the guy said, sure, they're human, sign them in. So they got signed in. So we were treaty for but they were kids. My mom, my, like my dad's family, they were kids at the time. And uh, that's how we became treaty because there were six boys. The whole six, the whole six of them got uh, treaty rights. So was my auntie, and we still lost it. You know, it's it's. You know, the government does everything under the sun with the native people. When does he get tired of doing that? You know, now, but what happened there? There's too many smart people in there now. Lawyers, you name it. Judges with the native people. That's what, that's a training that, that's where he made a big mistake is to train those people for, you know, stuff like that. Now he's, I don't know how he's going to get away this time if he gets away. I don't think he will. I shake my head a lot of times. Those poor little kids found in the ground, buried there, maybe some of them got thrown in there, just not even dead. We don't know that. But someday they'll find the truth because the native people are doing good because they did the white man did something to them and they didn't deserve that. It would be different if they were deserving it, but they didn't deserve nothing. What whatever happened to the residential school and stuff like that. Uh, but I think in the future we're going to win. I hope so. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I think it's time that we should be recognized. Another thing I was thinking of yesterday, I went for my coffee at Tim Hortons, and this white guy standing there, no, that point is standing up, this one is leaning down with his Rifle a trapper. They put him instead of the Indian. Indians trapped that whole north. All native people. That's how they make their living. Live off the land. And yet they put a white man there. They should be an Indian there. Same thing with El Point. I don't even know why they got theirs in there. They're south already. You know. But if you start talking about the way we live with the white people, it shows that they didn't like us. If they did, they wouldn't be doing things that they're doing. 
<laughs> yeah, I was uh, a president. I'm sure I was a president and a vice at one time with Henry and uh, once with uh, Clifford Gladio. But I, I really don't know exactly how many years, you know, I think, I don't know if it was every two years they used to change them days. Yeah, every two years. So I was there and uh, I had the last say.